Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to start our online lectures. Uh, we will have some brief introduction what we have discussed in our previous classes that we were done in university. We have started our topics from the basic introduction to statistics. Our first topic was that what is statistics? We have gone through what is probability. Then we have discussed the various basic terms of statistics like what is different uh, what is inferential statistics what is descriptive statistics what is the difference between these two terms because our probability and statistics are relied on these two terms like descriptive and inferential statistics uh, one tell you about the robustness of what uh, the validity of your claim then we have discussed about what is the various basic terms like what is population, what is the parameter, what is the statistic, what is the sample, what is variable, what is data. We have gone through with various examples uh, like paragraph examples in which we were, disc we were finding what, is, what should be the population, what should be the parameter. And that was very interesting while doing in our physical classes. And now our aim is to discuss, then we have discussed the basic terms of the data types. What is the qualitative data? What is the quantitative data? Qualitative data and the quantitative data have two different types. These topics were done in our classes. What is discrete data? Uh, continuous data. Examples were given to you and you have understand very well various examples and this was the best examples which uh, in which we have to find uh, different types of data quantitative qualitative and uh, how can you differentiate these three from this all uh, uh, given examples now our aim is to discuss about the displaying data how can you display the data if you gather the data from some survey or from any questionnaires now you have to display the data you cannot uh, you have to display data in a very precise and very best manner there are various method or method in order to organize and display the data like that tables are a good way of organizing and displaying data you can see in every newspaper you can see on uh, television that people are asking about the uh, data of crime. Crime has happened. What is the statistical data? And you can see everywhere that uh, the in terms of table format uh, also given that how many people have qualified the various tests and how many have failed to qualify the various tests. But graphs can be even more helpful. Uh, more than the graphs are more better option from the tables in understanding the data if you are going to understand the data i prefer uh, the graphs more than the table there are no strict rule concerning which graph to use there are various types of graphs okay and uh, there isn't any strict rule to choose which is the better which is the better it's depend upon the various graphs but there isn't any strict rule uh, or you can say that there isn't any hard and fast rule two graphs that are used to display qualitative data are pie charts and bar graphs when you are telling someone about the qualitative data qualitative data tell us about uh, the quality okay as i have already told you qualitative data qualitative data what was the qualitative data you can see here uh, the slide is also given here qualitative data sorry this is the qualitative data are the result of categorizing or describing attributes of a population like hair color blood type if you uh, you can see that the blood type is a positive a negative a b positive a b negative this uh, this is what this is the qualitative data ethnic group the car a person drive which car is he is driving and the street a person lives uh, in which street he is living that is basically the qualitative data and these type of data are generally described by word or letters okay this was the qualitative data 
and this type of data in which you are mentioning someone has and you are mentioning about the state in which he lives you can use the uh, pie chart or bar graph here uh, the the anza college the anza college and foothill college the data has been taken uh, from the example related to the anza college and foothill college uh, full time members full time members are 9200 number percentage is 40.9 percent okay for example we are discussing about the faculty we are discussing about the students who are doing phd full time and part time a person uh, who is doing full time phds are 9200 okay and uh, their percent is 40.9 and the part time who are doing their phds is 13296 and the percentage is 59.1 if you add full time and part time you will get the 100% and on the number you will get 2000 22496 okay on the other hand the foothill college full time phd student are 4059 and their percentage is 28.6% whereas the part time is 10124 and the percentage is 671.4% and the total is One four one eight three and the percent is hundred. In both you can compare. In both you can compare and you can see that the full time in the Anza College are more greater than the Fortel College, and the part time in the Anza College are also greater than the Fortel Fortel College. Okay. Okay. Now this is more. Uh, you can see that you can find it that uh, in the Anza College the full time members are nine thousand two hundred and in Fortel College the full time faculty members are PhD students are four zero five nine. Now in pie chart categorizing of data represented by wedges in a circle and are proportional in size to the percent of individual in each category. Now. in pie chart you will uh, you will what you will do in pie chart you will take this data and put in the pie chart you can see that in the part time is 59.1% you can see here that uh, and in previous slide 59.1 okay and in full time is 40.9% and the total comprises of the 100 Whereas in Fortel College, the percent also shown by the yellow and somewhere like a other color. Full time. Now you can see easily here that the part times in Fortel College is more than the Dionzo College, and the full time is less as compared to the Dionzo College. Okay. Yeah, forty point nine are full time, and here twenty eight point six greater as compared to this one. And here the part time is fifty nine point one, and here the seventy one point four are less. What happens? Uh, I will later tell you that how you will uh, uh, draw like these angles. How can you see, say this? Uh, where you will draw the angles? Okay. just a brief introduction to the pie chart okay pie chart sometime percentage add up to be more than 100 it's not necessary that you will get the percentage always 100 uh, some questions have different meanings for example in a class there are 100 student for example 40 will succeed in a exam then it's understood that 60 will be failed this will comprise the 100 but while there is optional subjects in university when a student or a studying for example some will uh, from the department of mathematics some will choose the physics subjects some will choose the geology subjects and when you are going to add up the percentage may vary okay percentage may vary because some will choose uh, what happens oh okay okay sorry let me take another example that sometime happen that one student take two subject or uh, there is a what happened that for example a student having age 25 a student having age for 4 uh, years of education the examples is here given 
in the graph below the percentage it percentage is add to more than 100 because student can be in more than one category what i was saying a student was in more than one category one student in three category one student in two category one student in four category that what will happen this will be more than 100 percent okay like this full time students are 40.9 percent okay a student who intend to transfer to a four year educational institutions are 48.6 a student under age are 25 is 61 point you can uh, see that full time student are 40.9 percent we can and uh, students under age are 25 Uh, these uh, under 25 may be there definitely there will be 1 2 4 or 5 or any 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 numbers will be there for the student full time who have the age of 25 and definitely there will be also those person who will transfer to the four educational institution because these there will be a uh, number of students who will fall in three category that is the reason that our percentage is add up to more than 100 because if like i was giving you example in a class if 40 student fail definitely 60 will pass because there is the only two options and one uh, bo one student cannot be pass or fail okay this is what the situation happens and in this example one student may fall in three categories and total that is why is more than 100 now a bar graph what is the difference between then we will discuss difference between bar and pie chart what is the bar graph a bar graph is appropriate to com compare the relative size of the categories okay and a pie chart cannot be used it is also could not be used if the percentage added to the less than 100 if your percentage is less than 100 it is better to use or greater than 100 it is better to use the bar graph uh, this is the difference between bar and pie chart as you i can uh, again repeat what is bar graph a bar graph is appropriate to compare the relative sizes of the categories okay you can see that the relative sizes of the categories a pie chart cannot be used it also could not be used if the percentage added to less than 100 you can see here that all students you can see all student will definitely add up to the 100 but uh, from all the student the student who are full time is 40.9 and a student who are intended to transfer to the four years are 48.6 under age 25 is 61 because all this will not add up 100 it is better to use the bar graph okay this is the main difference between bar and pie chart then another example of pie chart the following pie charts have the other unknown categories included since the percentage must add it to 100 chart b is organized by the size of each wedge which make it a more visually informative graph than the unsorted alphabetically graph a okay and you can see here that the graphs has been arranged in a descending order you can say that 61 48 40 this is another uh another benefit of bar graph here our aim is that uh, overall add up to the 100 ethnicity of students and what is the difference between these two graph you can see this and you can see this one is uh, arranged in ascending order you can see that uh, that here is a 36.1 percent are asians and this is 36.1 percent are asian then there is what there is uh decreasing order okay like this this is decreasing in this this is not arranged in ascending or descending order therefore better to use this graph because it has been organized in a better way of decreasing order or you can arrange in increasing order 36 okay for 24.5 17.1 this is the difference between the uh, two graphs then you can also arrange the bar graph the particular bar graph below can be difficult to understand visually this graph 
if you show uh, this graph to someone this will look very tedious you can see that it's not in a better shape because asian black filipino hispanic native americans are a little bit confusing it is better the other graph is a pareto chart this is more better this is called the pareto chart the pareto chart has the bar sorted from largest to smallest and is easier to read and it can be easier to read and interpret you can see in both this is the bar graph which is not in a very good a very good shape as compared to this pareto chart which has been in a decreasing order therefore this is the more better as compared to the bar graphs uh, you can say that you can you can say that pareto chart is a special kind of bar graph in which we arrange our rectangles in a descending order okay largest to smallest first the largest is taken then smallest then smallest then smallest then smallest this is more uh, you can see this this can be understood more easily someone will ask you people will ask you which has the highest tenacity of a student where in which country from where the students are in a high number in which subject the student are fail it is easier to use the pareto chart and in which subject student are less fail because the center between the largest and the smallest most of the people won't ask you therefore this pareto chart is more better uh, in your research to use as compared to the bar graph then we will discuss about simple uh, random sampling and the various st uh, stratified sample cluster sample systematic sample in our next lecture i hope that today you have understand what we are we were trying to discuss about the bar graph pie chart pareto chart and uh, thank you gentlemen if anyone is facing any difficulty can ask the question thank you student i hope you have understood what we were trying to discuss thank you allah peace